essentially it's built around a Quectel chip, but this isn't just a hardware solution, is it? No, um, no. Robustel has done a lot of work into making sure that you can really get started with this already. So um, can you talk about some of the kind of uh, software firmware OS and cloud solutions that are already pre-baked into this, uh, this system on module? Yeah, so that, that's a huge part of it as well. Um, for those of you that um, have had a had the luxury of investigating AT commands, the, the dark arts of driving cellular modules of AT commands. I'm sure you have some, some empathy for what that actually means. Hey, it's Aaron with IP Exchange. We've got another in-house video with David from Robustel. Uh, in the previous video, we talked a bit about Robustel in general, and we briefly mentioned uh, this embedded 4G router. Uh, but in this video, we'd like to outline kind of the benefits of going with a fully built for you system on module rather than building the whole thing from scratch. So there's two main benefits to this. Uh, one will be design time, time to market, and another is economical. So David, can you explain a little bit about where this kind of fits in terms of the type of designs, uh, design product quantities, um, that really makes this a winning solution for designers who... Yeah, who, no, no problem yeah. at all. So Robustel have manufactured um, 4G routers, cellular routers and, and similar um, LP1 type products for, for many years. And in recent years, it's become apparent that um, with the, the growth in volumes um, in IoT, especially in lower volume designs, so sort of in the one, one to three, one to five K space, okay. the prospect of actually um, integrating a cellular module directly on the PCB with everything that that entails is not always that favourable, especially if time to market is uh, is a key issue. So the R1511 embedded um, 4G solution is uh, designed to actually give design engineers an option to take a more system on module approach than actually um, directly taking cellular module components and creating an entire PCB design around that. I just wanted to uh, reiterate, we had a little discussion about kind of the the environmental impact of how some people are solving this problem currently. So you mentioned that people were buying modems and then ripping all the casing off and putting that in the bin and then embedding that. So yeah, yeah, that yes, is, that, that's <laughs> that's certainly happening. Yeah. So um, for size um, and other reasons, mm. uh, mechanical size constraints and other reasons, we did actually discover that quite a lot of um, volume users of traditional um, boxed 4G routers were actually buying them in, uncasing them possibly not having the warranty conversation before they did, <laughs> well, um, yes. and uh, putting a, a solution together that way. So by providing something that is um, pre-CE certified, so it's, it's certified without the enclosure, we've actually chosen to conformally coat this option as well. Um, most standard products um, don't have conformal coating, but because potentially it could be a little more exposed, um, to unpleasant environments, mm -hmm. it, there's a protective coating on the PCB. Um, oh, nice! And yeah, it's um, designed to to basically offer an alternative to either doing it yourself mm. or slightly haphazardly popping uh, PCBs out of their enclosures. <laughs> Excellent their enclosures. Cool. So um, there's a lot on here, isn't there? So um, I think we'll start with essentially it's built around a Quectel chip, but this isn't just a hardware solution, is it? No, um, no. Robustel has done a lot of work into making sure that you can really get started with this already. So um, can you talk about some of the kind of uh, software firmware OS and cloud solutions that are already pre-baked into this, uh, this system on module? Yeah, so that, that's a huge part of it as well. Um, for those of you that um, have had a had the luxury of investigating AT commands, the, the dark arts of driving cellular modules of AT commands. I'm sure you have some, some empathy for what that actually means. But um, the, the design uses a full Linux-based operating system and every conceivable subroutine that you might need, um, ping keep alives, SMS, remote SMS control, um, MQTT connections to our cloud platform that allows it to uh, report its health, maybe build an inbound VPN on demand. Uh, there's a vast amount of, um, you know, thousands of engineering hours of software in the operating system 
that um, that goes around the module. And one of the the, the, the commercial realizations, but was that that operating system is is sunk cost over ten years. So um, you know this can be a very a very competitive um, alternative to trying to do it yourself. I remember from the previous interview we were talking about. Um, you've got this connector here for um, if you want to use this as kind of the power hub for your design as well. So can you explain a little bit about the, the industrial protocols that... Yeah, so the, on the... Um, it, it's actually just a, a three-pin connector mm. and those pins can be used for RS-232, RS-485 and also digital in, digital out and gr the ground that goes with those uh, connections. And the probably the most popular usage is actually just to use the digital out um, sometimes through a solid state relay mm -hmm. and that will enable you to reboot any other equipment um, nearby you know in the associated design and it, it's just worth mentioning the RS485 is um, for things like solar panel inverters okay. and things like that is used um, to provide a Modbus RTU connection to any kind of legacy Modbus um, sensor or instrument. Cool so you can Sounds like you could use this as a, as a retrofit to almost IoTify existing products as well. Uh, absolutely, that, nice. that's that's what it's for. Whether it's uh, a new design from scratch, or whether you have um, thousands of, for example, bus signs okay. already in the <laughs> yes. field. Three yeah. Gs being sunset, and so those designs need to be moved mm. um, to a four G capable design. And that, for many of the companies that have to do that, it's a horrible capex that has very little return on investment because you're just maintaining what is already there. So mm -hmm. keeping the, the cost both in design and per device low is critical. And, and that's a big, yeah. big part of the purpose it serves. Yeah, and I remember you saying in one of the previous takes that um, because, I mean, there's lots of cellular modules out there, but... <laughs> that doesn't mean they have the same pin out. So if if you need to change, then you have to redesign the whole board. And this means that you don't have to do that. You can you can plug it in and have yeah. that have that ready. It's, yeah, it's it's almost like an ab abstraction layer um, from yeah. any module. Um, Robusto is always going to have a product of this ilk, and by virtue of the Robusto operating system, which also has a very um, complete SDK environment. Um, that will always provide uh, like a, a unified abstraction layer from whichever piece of uh, silicon is actually current um, at the time of manufacturing. So David, if there was a, an engineer who was thinking, oh, I'll, I'll just design that thing myself, um, can you just outline what the benefits of going with this solution will be yeah. for their time and uh, their company's cost? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So there, there's a, a variety of... Um, things to consider in a cellular based design obviously it becomes a uh, a telecoms device in essence but so from a hardware perspective um the 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 r1511 is um end product c mm. compliant so even if you are combining it with something else inside an enclosure you've got a pretty high degree of confidence that um it's not going to sing like a canary um when it's uh, emc testing time uh, I think we touched on the conformal coating as yeah. well, actually on the PCB. It's not complex, but it is just something that, that comes with the product, so you don't have to consider it. In this particular design, it uses a very um, cost-effective system on chip, so you get Wi-Fi and Ethernet um, interfaces included. So one of the, the spaces we see that that's useful is that you can actually turn up with your, let's say it's your EV charging post, Okay. And courtesy of this, you can make Ethernet, Wi-Fi, or 4G uh, outbound connection to the internet at the point of installation. You know, in some cases, you may be your customers may be able to avoid the cost of SIM cards if, if local internet connections are available. Excellent. And uh, obviously, with Robustel buying loads and loads of these chips in one go. There's the economic saving there as well. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think, to the best of my knowledge, about at least a quarter of a million modules have been uh, purchased by our friends at HQ. So wow. uh, nice. there's some there's some economies of scale on the most expensive component in the bill of materials. So in terms of software solutions, uh, as opposed to doing it yourself, where does Robustel really, really save you time? 
Well, uh, I think as we alluded to, the, the root of this type of design is generally um, lives with AT commands. Yes. Um, I think what we've come to see is that in the IoT space, there's lots of people uh, embarking uh, on this for the first time. Very competent design engineers, but maybe the vagaries of AT commands are, are not always clear. So yeah. whilst there might be some uh, dialers in Linux, there's lots of uh, additional code for connection control and, and looking after the, the internet connection over 4G uh, in essence. So you would need a, a pin keep alive, you'd need um, maybe a, an SMS um, subroutine, you might want um, Wi-Fi, Ethernet and 4G failover management. So mm -hmm. perhaps you install using the, uh, the, the retail store's Wi-Fi, okay. um, but you need to know if that connection's lost so you can fail over to um, to 4G. And probably the most um, the most important and the, the biggest value proposition around this is actually not on the board, it's in the cloud. Oh yes, so, yeah. Ro Robustel's Microsoft Azure based um, router management platform, um, now with over 100,000 devices on it, is able to visualize everything to do with the connection um, and if you embed your own applications um, on board, which is possible in the operating system, uh, then you can actually um, visualize your application data as well if it's uh, if that's required. Excellent. So I think I think that's a very strong argument for why you'd want to use this fully developed uh, embedded 4G router system on module um, in a lot of different situations. So. Um, yeah, read more about it on the Arc Exchange website. And thank you so much, David, for coming in and telling us about it. It's uh, been a really good chat. Pleasure. Cool. Cheers. Thank you.